This is Corey Sturmer with DurhamAgainstFluoride.com. When I first realized that the city government was deliberately poisoning our drinking water, my reaction was not to go to city council. Like most people, I went out and bought a filter. I couldn't wait around for the city bureaucrats to change their minds on this policy. I had to take matters into my own hands and protect myself. So I did the research and I concluded that the best filter out there was the Big Berkey. And you can even see me pictured in this uh, 2012 WTVD news piece on fluoride explaining the different elements that are used to remove fluoride. Let's take a look. Tonight, the I-Team is uncovering some startling information about something in the tap water we drink. We've been led to believe fluoride is supposed to make our teeth stronger, but we've discovered mounting evidence from researchers, dentists, and former staff at the EPA revealing fluoride can be harmful to our health. A Triangle viewer who saw an I-Team story we did five years ago has now launched a fight to ban the chemical. He's part of a national crusade to remove fluoride from your tap water. Concerned about the possible health impact, he started filtering his tap water. This particular filter has a carbon um, element, or two carbon el elements. So that filters out other impurities, but these two at the bottom are specifically designed to remove fluoride. At the time, I really believed that the Big Berkey was the best filter out there. And for a while, I even sold Berkeys here on this website as a way for people to protect themselves from the toxins purposely added to their public water, but also as a way to fund my effort to expose the government bureaucrats who ultimately are responsible for toxifying the water in the first place. But after so much research, I discovered a far superior method to removing the medications and toxins that they add deliberately to our water supply, and that method is called distillation. To understand why distillation is so important to your health and your future, I hope you'll watch this next clip, which is just a short science lesson on distillation. Tap water started out as distilled water. In nature, we have lakes, rivers, and streams. The sun heats these vessels of water up and the vapor rises to the upper atmosphere, where it's cooled and condensed back into water. Whenever you take water and change it to vapor, and then back to water, just like this vapor's coming out of the pot here, that's distillation. Rainwater, though, falls through an absolutely filthy atmosphere. It's completely void of anything in it. It's, it's distilled water. But everything in the air is gathered up by the distilled water and taken down to the earth. So you have emissions from factories, smog from cities, solvents from all kinds of chemicals, emissions from cars, trains, planes, and buses. All that is in the air. That's one reason the light is on in the tap water. Our tap water hits the ground. In one teaspoon of dirt, we have billions of bacterium, virus, and parasites. The reason we do is because every animal and insect that's ever lived, reproduced, died, and decomposed has become part of the soil, and that's the food for them. When the rain hits the ground, it picks up these bacterium, virus, parasites, decayed animals, and insects, carries them to a lake, a river, a spring, a stream, a well, it doesn't matter, and that water is, is full of everything that's in the soil. Uh, it comes to a lake, the fish live there and they die there. And we drink that. We drink everything that's in the soil, every microbiome, every microorganism, everything that comes in contact with water, water absorbs and transports it. Our water comes to a treatment plant where we're chemically treating our water. That's why it's called a treatment plant. Our water is exposed to many chemicals. This is a, a newspaper from from Utah called Capital Connections News for about people in state government. The Utah State Seal. On the back of it it says making sure your water is safe. It's written about Eva Nemensky. She has a PhD in environmental engineering. She's over all 50 water treatment plants in the state of Utah. She says right here, we're learning about very resistant pathogens in water. They're very difficult to kill so you need strong disinfectants. These chemicals may ultimately cause cancer over your lifetime. So the question becomes, would you rather have diarrhea today or cancer tomorrow? So who wants diarrhea and who wants cancer? Pretty, pretty good choice there, huh? That's the two choices we have, drinking tap water. The journey that distilled water takes is way different than tap water. We bring water to, in a boiling chamber to boil. The steam rises 
and leaves all the impurities behind in the boiling chamber. The steam forces the coil, the fan cools the coil, changes the steam into 99.9% .9 pure water. Periodically we drain this boiling chamber out. So one would make 50 gallons of water through the distillation process. What was in 50 gallons of water now is trapped in the boiling chamber. When we clean that out, we sometimes are totally amazed with the amount of filth that's in that boiling chamber. So this newfound information and understanding about distillation prompted me to go on Amazon.com and purchase a one gallon mega home distiller and begin removing the toxins and medications purposefully added by the city of Durham to my water supply against my consent. Well, I got my distiller and I began boiling off some water and was absolutely astounded at what I found at the bottom of the distiller after only a single run. What you're looking at on screen is the result of boiling off 15 gallons worth of Durham City water in my home distiller and collecting what was left over. Just to put this in perspective, 15 gallons is only what one would drink over 30 days if they ate, uh, excuse me, drank the suggested eight glasses per day. So, in other words, if you drink the suggested amount of water, you are drinking this much filth every month. So, to expand on this, please watch this other clip which will go into more detail about the sediments collected in other city tap waters. Salt Lake City, that's what's in 50 gallons of Salt Lake City water after we turn the boiling chamber up. And people wonder why they're getting sick, why they have diseases. This is Ogden, Utah right here. That's 50 gallons of Ogden City water. Isn't that weird? How much filth is in tap water? You never would believe it unless you see it for yourself. Morgan, up where you work, this is uh, about 80 gallons of Morgan, Morgan City water. Does that look like one of the chemicals they add at the water treatment plant? It does, doesn't it? It's copper sulfate. Now the reason that they put copper sulfate in the water up there is because they have algae growing in the pipelines and copper sulfate is an algaecite. Now algae won't hurt us, will it? We can eat algae, but when it starts to die and rot in water, it smells. You've smelled the Great Salt Lake. When the algae starts to grow and, and rot, it's got a, quite a, an odor to it. Well, that, when it has that gas inside these pipelines and they inject chlorine into it, it creates trihalomethane gas. Okay? And that's very carcinogenic. That's where we come up with prostate cancer, bladder cancer, colon cancer. Uh, this is, some lady told me the other day she only drinks spring water from North Ogden Spring. That's 30 gallons of the North Ogden Spring, you know, and that's, that's what's in spring water. Whenever you're drinking right out of the dirt, right out of the ground, you're drinking dirt. You're drinking filth. You're drinking everywhere you walk. Okay? You're drinking everything that's on the bottom of your shoe. It doesn't matter where that water's from. The filth is there. These inorganic minerals are what we're drinking. This is right out of a distiller. Does that look like it would be nice for our inside of our body? Dr. Charles Mayo from Mayo Clinic. He's got a clinic in Arizona, one in Minnesota. His quote here is, Water hardness or inorganic minerals in solution is the underlying cause of many, if not all, diseases resulting from poisons in the intestinal tract. These hard minerals pass from the intestinal walls and get into the lymphatic system which deliver all of its products to the blood which in turn is distributed to all parts of the body. This is the cause of much human disease. Dr. Charles Mayo of the Mayo Clinic.